Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Um, I've been sent this night vision scope from Arkan Optics. Now, Arkan Optics were not so long since um, Hitak, and you may have seen they sent me one then I unboxed that. Well, this one is the Zulux, Zulu Zulux. I think I'm gonna go with Zulus, I'm gonna call it, but who knows, you can make your own choice on that one. Uh, this is an HD 5 to 20 by, um, I'm not sure what the objective lens size is, digital day night scope, Arkan Optics USA. So you're here with me to unbox this. I have printed out some notes just in case there's nothing in there that tells me the specifications, but we shall see. So this, as you can see, is absolutely box fresh, ready to open. So you can, you can have the Christmas morning just like me and open this one today. I'm a little bit out of the habit at the moment because I've been away, but we're back now and I've got a lot of new items coming for review. And there we go. So, this one comes with, good, it comes with an instruction booklet. That is always handy. Uh, we've got here probably a lens cleaning cloth. That looks like a USB-C charging cable. And then here is the main unit. Which will be familiar to those who've seen the previous review, but I'm just gonna drop everything out of this box because Here's the main unit, right now. So on the bottom, that's the bottom there. That's got the mounting, uh, the mounting points for this to go on it. It's got a Picatinny mount, so that comes with Allen keys, all the screws, etc. These are about 600 pounds, I think, and that will drop out of there. Now, one thing I do know about these is I've shot the previous one on a 223. It's got 45 millimeters of eye relief. So that's quite short. And on a 223, it's okay, but I'm not sure you want it on anything bigger because it does give you a little bit of a nudge every time you shoot it. But essentially that is going to go on there, something like that. Let's just, just pop it together loosely just to see what it looks like to start with. Now this one is the range finding version and it's got a ballistic computer as well. The ballistic computer, after reading the instructions, the ballistic computer looks like it'll operate in two or three different ways. You can have it give you an on-screen real-time readout or you can have it working via your phone. There is a phone app to go with this. That's the eye cup there, I'll just screw that on there like that. So you can set it up with your phone, there's an app and everything like that, and that's the way you'll get it all going. You can have it feedback through your app, you can have it with range cards, but importantly, I do believe it will give you real-time on-screen um, ballistic update with uh, the little secondary aim point. So that is the range finding button on the left side there. I don't think it comes with batteries. The manufactured unit, the fully production unit might do, but we'll see on that. It takes 18650 flat tops. So I've got a few of those in stock and we'll see about that. that. Picatinny mount there. We've obviously got multiple positions there. I've just dubbed it together for the moment. Front focus is here. There's a lens cap there. So that's your image focus there. You've got eyepiece focus back here. The zoom function is controlled with that little dial there and it's got five to 20 times zoom. It's quite nice having a, a manual function for that. It's good. Uh, range finding, as I said, is on there. There is an illuminator on board, which has got the left side collar here. And I'm told that is an LED illuminator and it's 850 nanometers. It is approved safe. Picatinny on the right side there. You can put a larger illuminator on that if you want. And this cap on the right side is a little bit stiff to remove. It's a little bit sharp as well. So I'll just very cautiously take that off. This whole thing's IP67 rated for waterproof, dustproof, etc. So in there we go the USB-C charging port and there's also a micro SD card. Um, they don't seem to have a data out on that, which is, doesn't really matter because I don't think anybody uses them anymore anyway, because you can usually tag these things straight through into a PC with a USB-C cable or with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth through your phone or other app device, smart device. Control buttons on top. So let's go through and have a look at the, um, the cheat sheet on here. It tells a few things about it. Right, um, Arkan Zulus comes equipped with, equipped with the latest Sony Starvis 2 CMOS sensor with better imaging and NIR near infrared performance. These are probably names that will mean something in marketing teams, but not really to me. You know me, I'm Mr. Straightforward. The Zulus is equipped with a 60 frame per second, 1920 by 1080 micro 
organic LED screen and it has IP67 waterproof rating to provide shooters with the best tool to engage targets in all lighting conditions. Well, let's hope so because they will get wet. It's now the end of October and it's raining all the time. Going back to the 60 frame per second sensor, I have actually been using the non-LRF version of this, which was still branded up Hitark. Um, it does give you a very smooth daylight image. It is actually quite good in the dark as well, but it does appreciate greater levels of IR. And I think this has got a five stage onboard illuminator, which can be focused at different distances. But I think realistically in illuminate this site, you're gonna be limited to about 100 meters. And I think frankly, with 45 millimeters of eye relief on a 223, you do feel it nudge you every time. And it's not bothersome or painful, but you wouldn't really wanna put it on anything bigger. I'll get to that in a minute because it is rated for some quite large calibers. The onboard illuminator is five watts. It's 850 nanometers standard. They do do a version with a 940, but the 850 is what I've been sent. Um, talks about coyotes, wild hogs, so it's very American oriented. Um, range as far as 450 meters. To be honest, something big enough for a wild hog is maybe a little bit bigger than I want physical recoil, 45 millimeters from my face, but there we go. Um, that's not to say it's a lot different to a lot of night vision scopes because a lot of them have, you know, they say we've got 60 millimeters or 65 millimeters of eye relief. Well, most daylight scopes have got 90 to 100 millimeters of eye relief. So those are the numbers you want to be thinking about, especially when you start generating some recoil, because it's not about what this is rated to withstand. It's about what the interaction of your face is rated to withstand. So flicking through this now. Oh dear, 60 hertz sensor, 1920 by 1080, we've done that. Uh, running through it, right, the zoom is IP67 rated for waterproof, dustproof, etc. And it's recoil rated up to 338 Lapo Magnum and a 50 BMG. Um, 338s and 50s, I've often got very heavy weight and muzzle brakes on them. I know I've shot plenty of them. Uh, that's all very nice. And if that will withstand that, great. But again, 45 millimeters from my eye, no. Um, let's move on from that. And, and the thing is, realistically, it can be sporting rifles. Large caliber sporting rifles can actually be worse than big military rifles because they're light, they're physically light and they haven't got recoil suppression brakes and things like that on. Um, but, you know, let's ignore that because everybody talks about masses of eye relief and they don't really realize what the actual requirements are to um, correspond with a human's interaction ergonomically, right? Overall length, eight inches, blah, blah, blah. Record, record your, yes, yeah, so you can record on it. You can do sound on it as well. Um, Caption memories, yeah, you can do pictures. Better user experience in the interface. There is quite a good menu screen on it. Like any night vision or thermal imaging tool, you have to get a bit used to it because they all have a slightly different language that you've got to kind of figure out and work towards. But when you figure it out, it works quite well and it's visually clear and easy to use because I have zero the other one. This one's going on an air rifle, but I've got the other one running on a 223 as well. So hopefully we're going to get some ratting footage and we're going to get some foxing and maybe some hares and rabbits shot as well. Built-in illumination system. Yeah, we've got the built-in IR here. We've talked that a little bit. Cutting edge laser range finder and ballistic app. Okay, so here's the interesting point now. 10 to 1,000 meters, it gives a rating for. This will be interesting to try out. And of course, in the darkness, range finders do generally work a little bit better than in daylight anyway, due to the, you know, the uh, interaction of daylight conditions. So that's reasonably believable. We'll, we'll try that out. I think to be fair, you have to realize these are hunting tools. They're not long range target or sniper's tools. So are we gonna be taking thousand meter shots? Very, very unlikely. Um, but it does give you an identity, you know, a, a realistic option of how strong the laser is, because of course, you're not always talking about thousand meter shots in perfect conditions. You might be talking 300 meter shots in terrible conditions with rain and wind and all sorts and, you know, various foggy things, which is going to dampen and, and, and really ruin uh, the strength of a laser range finder transmitting through the atmosphere anyway. So a strong laser that's rated to a thousand meters might be pretty good at 300 in those poor conditions. Detachable built-in IR illuminator, you can, I think, detach that and put the other one on, but I'm not sure anybody's likely to do that. Generally speaking, if you are going to be using it longer distances, most people are going to be using that picked in mount on the side, fitting a larger IR illuminator or somewhere on the rifle too. There's a patented app, reticle zeroing with only one click. Um, it's a bit more than one click, to be honest. You do kind of need four or five clicks on that, but um, essentially, I think the one click's referring to the fact that once you've taken your first shot, you can aim on the uh, target again, click the button and it gives you a freeze frame on it so you can then dial exactly where your aim point and your, your impact point was. So you won't waste as much ammunition. Generally speaking with um, night vision, although you can use it in daylight as well because of course it's got color and night vision mode in black and white. 
just start close and work back. Don't waste ammunition because it's, it's expensive and it's not easy to come by sometimes. So uh, the detachable eye cup is deta you know, detachable eye cup's got metal thread, so you can take that off, and theoretically you can use that without it on. But I would prefer to keep it there as a reminder to make sure I'm not getting too close to it because I don't want thumping in the face. Uh, what else have we got? Digital adjustment wheel, we've talked about that. Cutting edge digital gyroscope. Yes, so it will warn you if you are uphill, downhill, or canting left and right. That's quite handy, and I think the ballistics calculator will take that into account as well, but we shall see when we're using that. Uh, innovative engagement methods, dial in and hold over. So that's to do with the ballistics. Uh, up to eight hours of battery life with 16 hours on standby. Um, that's more dependent, really, on what batteries you use with it because high quality batteries will generally last longer and you know slightly warmer conditions will do better. Batteries have their own lifestyle and it does make sense to take care of decent quality batteries that you can buy for these things. As I say, it takes 18650 flat tops and swapping them over is a case of taking that cap off there, dropping it out, putting another one in and off you go again because I don't really like having loads of additional USB-C cables and, and, and additional battery packs dragging around on a rifle which is at the end of the day for hunting and it's only going to snag on things anyway. So I have got an air rifle handy which this will go on. It's got standard air rifle dovetail mounts but I've got a Picatinny adapter for it so that's going to go on the Picatinny adapter. It's going to go on the air rifle and I'm going to be able to play with all the ballistics on it because to be fair if I put it on a 223 rifle and went foxing with it, I wouldn't use the rangefinder that much because I shoot all my foxes between about 100 and 250 metres max anyway. So I just go for a point blank zero so I don't have to think or worry about anything when, when the time matters. I think this will be mostly of interest from, from what I see of people's feedback. It's people shooting air rifles, and I can understand this, and rimfires too, who are going to take most use of the ballistic calculations because you've got significantly looper you know, trajectories, you've got significantly short and long distance variation between them, and of course you've got things like um, very close range shots with air rifles which can really throw some spanners in the works of many ballistic calculators because it's really important that you get the um, barrel to optical centerline height correct otherwise it won't calculate the correct holdovers for you or hold unders in some cases. So that's going to go on the air rifle. It's going to be in a fairly high position, but of course, an air rifle, we've got no recoil issues at all. It's actually going on a sub 12 air rifle, so I do need absolute precision with it because rats with a 177 sub 12 air rifle need absolutely spot on headshots to make sure you're doing the business on them. It's not like you can thump away with body shots like a 40 foot pound 22 or 25 air rifle, that's for sure. So we shall see. Well, um, please, if you've got any comments to make, especially about eye relief, because I did a little short video on the eye relief thing with it shooting the other one yesterday. Please like, subscribe, make those comments. Put all the things you want to hear about this in the full review, and the full review will appear, hopefully, in a few weeks' time, if and when it stops raining. Um, I'm looking forward to using it. It's quite nicely made. The IP67 is reassuring. And uh, don't forget, click the notification bell so you can keep track of all my regular uploads because I have literally got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff under this very bench that I've got to have to unbox now. Um, so there's going to be a lot coming up soon. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye for now.